So let's actually see how one could use this to solve a system of equations. Uh, so consider the matrix A, which here it's going to be a two by two matrix, three, negative two, negative five, and four. So if you want to solve a system using Kramer's rule, the first thing that's necessary is you have to have a square matrix. We have that. It needs to be non-singular. And one way of checking to see if a matrix is non-singular is to compute its determinant. The determinant of A, remember, is equal to 3, negative 2, negative 5, and 4. Um, if the determinant of the square matrix is non-zero, that means it's non-singular. So that's actually, since we have to calculate the determinant anyways, this is a good way to see if we can even use Kramer's rule. And so multiplying together the diagonals, you get 3 and 4, which is 12, minus... 2 and 5, which is 10. I mean, those are negatives, but it's a double negative there. You get 12 minus 2, which, sorry, 12 minus 10, which is 2. Um, this tells us that A is, in fact, non-singular. And it also is the first step we need to do Kramer's rule. Uh, the next things we have to do is we have to compute the determinant of A1B, which what this means is you take the first column of A and you're going to replace it with B. Notice here that B is the vector uh, 6 and 8. Just looking at the right-hand sides of those above equations. So you're going to put 6 and 8 into the first column. And then the second column of A is identical, negative 2 and 4. It's a 2 by 2 determinant. So to calculate that, we get 6 and 4, which is 24. And then we get negative 2 and 8, which is going to give us a 16. We're subtracting it, so it will be a positive 16 right there. Uh, that adds up to be 40. And we have to then compute a two b. A two b means you take the second column of a and you're going to replace it with b. So you get six eight right there, and then the first column is identical to a three and negative five. So you'll notice in this situation a one b you put b in the first column, a two b you put b in the second column right there. So calculating this 2 by 2 determinant, we get 3 times 8, which is also 24. We're going to get plus because there's a double negative, 6 times 5, which is 30. And so those add up to be 54. And so our claim now is that the solution x will equal 40 divided by 2. So we took, we took a1b divided by the determinant, so you get 40 divided by 2. And then for the second entry, you're going to take 54 divided by 2. 54 divided by 2, so you took A2B divided by the determinant right there. Uh, 2 goes into 40 20 times, of course, and 2 goes into 54 27 times. And so this gives us the unique solution to the system of equations. And you can check. Um, if you take 3 times 20, that's 60. If you take 2 times 27, that's 54. 60 minus 54 is 6. It satisfies the first equation. And then for the, the second equation there, um, if you take 5 times 20, uh, that's going to be 100, so it's a negative 100 there. And then 4 times 27, that's 108. Their difference will be 8. Um, so you can see that this, in fact, does solve the system of equations. So it kind of worked okay, but this is a 2 by calculate this. We had to calculate 1, 2, 3. We had to calculate 3 2 by 2 determinants. That itself is not so complicated. But when it comes to a 2 by 2 determinant, um, you have to do this product and this product. So every 2 by two, 2 by 2 determinant takes two multiplications, two products one has to do. And so if you have three determinants to do, you're going to have to do um, four multiplications, six multiplications. And then given that you have to compute this quotient over here, you have a quotient. Uh, which is kind of like doing a multiplication, it's just multiplying by the reciprocal. Um, this thing is going to require what we call eight flops. Uh, in terms of computational difficulty, we're basically counting how many times do we have to multiply. Because uh, addition is not too costly. But multiplication, even if it's like a nanosecond, does cost a little bit of time in terms of computational difficulty. On the other hand, um, if, we had a, if we had a problem like A11, A12, A21... A22 augment B1, B2. If we wanted to solve this thing using row reduction, uh, what we're going to do is, is that we basically know that this thing is going to go to zero, right? This will go to zero no matter what. We're going to have to multiply. There's a flop right here because we're going to do 
uh, we're going to subtract something. And we have to subtract A12 uh, divided by, there, there's a little bit going on there. So let me be more specific. We are going, because we're taking row 2 minus uh, A21 over A11 times row 1. Now, we don't actually have to do multiplication in the first column because we know it'll just cancel out. So here we have to do A21 over A11 times A12. Uh, and we're going to have to do it here as well. We're going to have to subtract A21 over A11 times B1. And so in terms of flops here, you do have to do this quotient, maybe. Um, you're going to do a multiplication here and here. So we're up to three flops so far. Uh, once you do that, that'll then simplify these terms. And so this will row reduce into being something like the following. A11, A12, B1. We get a zero right here. We're going to get a something. Um, I'm just going to call it C for the moment. And then a D right here. Uh, so the next thing to do in terms of row is we would, uh, we would divide our everything by C, but we don't have to do C divided by C. We know that's going to equal 1. Um, and then we have to do divided by C right here. That's another flop right there. So we're up to 4. Keep track of things. Uh, then the next thing to do is we're going to, we want to get rid of this right here. Now to do it, we're going to do row 1 minus uh, row, sorry, we're going to take, uh, we're going to just do A12 right here row two. And so this is going to go to a zero right here, the one, two. Uh, but here we're going to have to take B1 minus this A1, two, B over, over C. That gives us another flop. We're up to five right now. And because again, we don't have to do a flop on this one because we know it's going to go to zero and we had to do one right there. We already did the, we already did the, I throw B over C. I meant to write D over C. We already did this D over C on the previous calculation. Did I keep track of that? Um, I think I did. I, I'll have to double check there. Uh, we did one, two, three, four, already did it. And then five. Yeah. So we're good right there. And then for this last little piece, This last little piece right here, uh, we have uh, we have this A11. Uh, we have some number, we'll call it E right now, some other number F01, um, this D over C, we did this. Now to get a one right here, uh, we just have to divide it by one, or we just divide by A11. We already did that one, so that's good. You get a one right there. You have to divide this by A11, and you have to divide this by A11. So there's two more quotients there. So in the end, if we kept track of everything, we end up with seven flops in terms of difficulty. Now, seven, seven flops versus eight flops, not so bad, equal, but there is a slight advantage to the row operation. The issue, though, is that when you start looking at three by three, four by four and five by five, right? Then the difference of this is gonna grow much complicated. Row operations have about a complexity of like n cubed, I think. Uh, I could be wrong about that one, but it's it's a polynomial algorithm um, as opposed to Kramer's rule, which is gonna grow like a factorial. Um, for even small n's, there's gonna be a huge difference. So Kramer's rule is not necessarily what I recommend if you want want to solve systems of equations because it's going to get complicated very fast. I There are some in the homework section, in which case you'll be asked to do some of them. And that's mostly to convince you about how horrible it is. So um, pack a sandwich before you go into those.